Okay, section 13.4, we're gonna talk about compound events. So what does that mean, compound events? Well, it basically means two or more events. And so let's take a look at some of the different uh, terminology that you wanna understand. So first thing is mutually exclusive versus overlapping. So an example of mutually exclusive would be like people that are in ninth grade, people that are in 10th grade. This is the set of ninth graders, this is the set of 10th graders. You can see there's nobody that's in both ninth grade and 10th grade, it's one or the other. Whereas with overlapping, like say you take all the people that are in your math class and all the people that are in your English class, see at least you are in both your math and your English class, so you can see these events are overlapping, right? Now, when you use the word or in math, okay, or means both combined, like you're combining the sets, okay? So if you say I'm going to the store or I'm staying home in normal day language, that means like, you know, you're just doing one or the other, but not both, right? But in math, or means union. It means you're uniting or combining both those sets together, but you don't want to double count any that are in both sets. Whereas and in math, and means intersection. It means the overlap. It would be the people that are in this region right here that are in both uh, your math class and your English class, okay? So they're in that overlapping region. So when we want to figure out the probability that you're in set A or set B, if they're mutually exclusive, meaning they're non-overlapping, you just take the probability of A plus the probability of B. But if they're overlapping like this, when you want to find the probability of A or B, which means the union of those two sets, you find the probability that the first event happens plus the probability the second event happens, but you have to subtract the probability of the over the people in the overlapping region. So you, because basically you're counting all the people in your math class, all the people in your English class, but you're double counting those people, you know, that are in this region here that are in both. So you don't want to double count those people. So you're subtracting that off. Now, another thing we want to understand is the independent versus dependent. So say you run some type of a experiment or you do some type of a trial and then you do a second event or a second trial. Independent means that the second thing that occurs is not affected by the first thing that occurred. Okay, so that was, that's what independent means. Dependent means that the second event, the probabilities are gonna change based on what happened the first time. So those are called dependent. So let's look at some examples. Like, uh, say for example, you have a hat, and in this hat there's two red marbles and three blue marbles. What's the probability that you pick a red marble and then you pick another red marble? Well, it depends. Okay, let's say you pick a red marble. That's gonna be two chances of success out of five total, right? But if you put that marble back in, you stir it up and you go to pick another red marble, the probabilities are still gonna be two out of five. In that case, those are called independent events, and all you have to do is multiply those together and you get four out of 25. Now, say we pick the first red marble. That's a two out of five chance, but then we throw it away and we say we're gonna pick another red marble, there's only one chance out of four marbles left. So now your probability is gonna be two out of 20, which you can reduce down to uh, one tenth. So in that second scenario, that's dependent because when you took out that marble, now the probabilities have changed. When you go to pick another red marble, the probabilities are gonna be different. So those are called dependent events, but in either case, you're multiplying the probabilities together to get that combined probability. Now another thing I wanna mention, want to learn Algebra 1? Check out my Learn Algebra 1 video course for sale where we go through 87 video lessons that take you step by step by step through Algebra 1. We talk about the important concepts, formulas, and we go through numerous example problems together to help you learn Algebra 1. Click the interactive card or the link in the description below to take you over there to get started with some of the free lessons. In the meantime, let's continue on with this video. Now, another thing I want to mention to you is that I know when I first learned about this kind of thing, I didn't know anything about cards, but a lot of times these probability questions relate to a standard deck of 52 playing cards. So it's good to understand how these uh, playing cards are just uh, broken down. So there's 52 cards, 26 are red and 26 are black, so it's split in half. Of the 26 red cards, they're split in half again, there's 13 hearts which are red and 13 diamonds which are red. Of the 26 black cards, there's 13 spades, like a shovel, and 13 clubs. Okay, so those are, these are black and these are red. But okay, now each suit, as these are called, these four groups are called suits, each suit has a king, a queen, and a jack. Okay, king, queen, jack, king, queen, jack, king, queen, jack. They also have number cards, two through 10 of hearts, two through 10 of diamonds, two through 10 of spades, two through 10 of clubs, and there's an ace of hearts, ace of diamonds, ace of clubs, ace of spades. 
Okay, so let's jump into some examples and you can see how this works. So given a standard deck of cards, what is the probability that you draw an ace followed by another ace with replacement without replacing that first card? Okay, so good question. So what's the probability that you draw an ace? Well, there's four aces out of 52 cards. So that's gonna be four out of 52, right? Four out of 52. Now, if you put it back into the deck of cards, you shuffle them up, you go to draw another ace, the probabilities are gonna be the same, four chances of success out of 52. And if you multiply those together, that's gonna be your probability. But if you do it without replacement, the first time it's four out of 52, the next time you go to draw a card, there's only three aces out of 51 remaining cards. So three chances of success out of 51 total possible outcomes. Multiply those together, you can see this probability is gonna be different than the first one. So these are called dependent. The first one with replacement was independent. Okay, so you with me so far? Okay, look, look at number two. It says, what is the probability you draw a king or a heart? So see that word or, remember or is union, like you're combining them together. So how many kings are there? One, two, three, four kings, right? How many hearts are there? Well, there's 13 hearts. How many king of hearts are there? See, let me see if I can kind of draw this picture here. See, if I circle this, see there's the four, there's four kings here. The 13 hearts are right here. But you see how this king is in the king group and the heart group? So we're double counting that. Now remember when you, they're overlapping like that, you have to subtract off the fact that we're double counting this king. So the probability of drawing a king plus the probability of drawing a heart, minus the probability of, of a king and a heart, right? Probability of a king, we said, was four chances out of 52. Probability of a heart is 13 chances out of 52. The probability that you get a king of hearts is one chance out of 52. Now, the reason we're subtracting is because we counted it twice. We just subtract off one of the double counts, and you got it. So this is gonna be 16 out of 52, and you can reduce that or convert it to a decimal. Okay, let's look at number three. It says, what is the probability that you choose a diamond or a club? There's that word again, or. Remember, or means union. We're combining them together. How many diamonds are there? Well, there's 13 diamonds. Okay, how many clubs are there? There's 13 clubs. Are there any that are in both the clubs and the, the clubs over here and the diamonds in here? No, these two groups are not overlapping. So these are what they call mutually exclusive. You just have to add the two probabilities together. So this is just gonna be 26 out of 52, which reduces to one half. That's your chance. So you wanna pay attention to whether you're talking about independent, dependent, mutually exclusive, or overlapping. Let's look at this last example here. It says, given uh, the hat and spinner below, okay, right here, it says, what is the probability that you draw a blue marble and you spin a three on the spinner? So what's the probability you draw a blue marble? Four out of five, right? Four chances of success out of five total. What's the chance that you spin a three on the spinner? One chance of spinning a three out of four possible. If we multiply those together, you can see the fours are canceling and we get a one-fifth chance that that happens. Now these are called independent events. When I go to pick this uh, marble here, this blue marble, does it affect what happens on the spinner? No, so these are independent events. You just multiply them together. You don't have to worry about the probabilities changing. And that basically wraps up this particular section. So this is a compound events. I'll see you in the next section.